superior gluteal artery Superior gluteal artery is an important artery. Its injury can cause excessive bleeding. The aorta bifurcate at the level of L4 and it will make two common iliac arteries, which is about four centimeter long and end in front of the SI joints and each common iliac artery divide into external and internal iliac artery. Internal iliac artery is the major arterial supply of the pelvis. It divides into two parts, anterior division and posterior division. The superior gluteal artery is a branch of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. It reaches the gluteal region through the greater sciatic notch above the periformis. It divides into superficial and deep branches. The superficial division enters between the gluteus maximus and medius. So it enters the deep surface of the gluteus maximus. The deep division passes between the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus. It lies on the deep surface of the gluteus medius. Now the inferior gluteal artery is different. It's a branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. It leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic notch below the periformis. It supplies the gluteus maximus and give the following branches. Number one, the sciatic artery, to call it the vasa nervosa, it runs with the sciatic nerve. Another branch called the anastomotic branch that's joining the cruciate anastomosis. So the superior gluteal artery is above the piriformis the inferior gluteal artery is below the piriformis. There are some important clinical facts about the superior gluteal artery. Number one, if you try to get bone graft, posterior iliac crest, bone graft, and you get into the notch, you may injure the artery. You can see the diagram that illustrate the position of the artery from the posterior iliac crest. The second scenario that's important is the fracture estabulum and the extensile approach, which is extended iliofemoral approach, Dr. Litronel approach. So in this approach, they dissect the entire gluteal muscles of the iliac crest from front to the back and from the top to the bottom, and they will continue to do that until the posterior superior iliac spine and the notch. So the entire outer surface of the ilium is exposed. And the entire gluteal muscle mass will be hanging by the superior gluteal artery. If you're going to do that approach, take care to protect that artery. There is some concern if you do embolization of the superior gluteal artery or if there is a fracture going towards the notch that the artery may be injured and if you elevate the entire gluteal mass from the ilium, then there will be a risk of devascularization of the whole mass because the artery, the superior gluteal artery, may not be working. This approach is probably still used by few surgeons and is used for an old establer fractures because it helps 
in the reduction of the fracture, especially if the fracture more than three weeks. It may also be used in some selective cases of acetabular fractures. The third scenario is pelvic fracture. This artery is important in pelvic fracture. People die from pelvic fracture because of hemorrhage. Most of the hemorrhage is venous bleeding and fracture bleeding. But some cases, about 10%, will have an arterial bleeding. The highest mortality of these patients usually occurs on patients that have shock on presentation to the emergency room. These are the people that require massive blood transfusions. So the more the hemorrhage, the more the mortality. So what happened to the artery? Here is the pelvis, here is the notch, here is the artery. So when you have shearing injury or diastasis of the circular joint, the artery can be torn, especially in the anterior posterior compression pattern. And these are the patient that you probably need to give blood, fresh frozen plasma and platelets. Ideally, you will transfuse them in one to one to one ratio, especially if these patients require massive transfusion. CT angiography may be helpful in determining if there is an arterial injury. The criteria for angiography and embolization of the superior gluteal artery is not well established. But if the patient continues to be unstable despite giving the blood, let's say four units of blood in the first hour, then he probably will need angiography and embolization for the superior gluteal artery or other source of bleeding. Superior gluteal artery injury can occur from placement of screws in the area of the sciatic notch. You may need to palpate the sciatic notch to avoid placement of the screw into this dangerous area. What if the artery is injured during surgery? It could retract into the pelvis. So if you find it, you're probably gonna clip it and make sure you don't clip the superior gluteal nerve. You'll do a lot of packing and you will call the radiology suite and you will call the vascular surgeon. Make sure anesthesia will have enough blood available and make sure you tell everybody you have a major arterial bleed and ask for help. Thank you very much for listening. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.